Hey there, my name is Julian and I am super excited to be here with you today making this video. What we're going to go over is how you can use Member Stack with Bricks. Now, the stack of WordPress, Bricks Builder, and Member Stack is absolutely lethal. I have been using it for some production projects and I have been absolutely loving it. And that is why I'm so excited to be here with you today to show you how to use Bricks, which is my favorite page builder with member stack. So without further ado, let's get right into it. What I have here is a pretty much blank WordPress site with Bricks Builder installed. And along with that, I have a member stack app created. So when you create a member stack app, what you're going to see here first is this. If you don't see this, then just go ahead and click get started and you're going to be taken over here to this page. So the next thing that you're going to have to do is actually install the member stack plugin. So let's go ahead and do that right now by heading over to plugins and then click add new plugin. And we're going to search for member stack. Just like that. Hit enter. As we can see, member stack right there, the one and only. Let's hit install. And then once it's done installing, let's go ahead and let's click activate. So as we can see, member stack is now installed and we can see it in our admin sidebar over here. So let's go over here. And the first thing it tells us to do is enter our member stack app ID. So let's head back over here into member stack. As we can see here, we've already installed the member stack plugin. We just need to add our app ID. So let's go ahead and hit copy on that. Let's head back over into WordPress and paste it in. All right, let's paste in our app ID and hit save. And there we go. As you can see, we're now connected to member stack. The next thing we need to do is add the member stack bricks add on. So let's click view add ons. Go ahead and select Bricks Builder Integration and then hit Save Changes. And just like that, Member Stack will be working with Bricks Builder. So the other thing that I want to show you super quickly, if shortcodes are your thing, now you can build everything custom in Bricks. Um, but in case you do like shortcodes, then you have a whole bunch of shortcodes to choose from with a whole bunch of options right over here. Now, the first thing that I want to go ahead and show you how to do is how you can allow people to sign up and log in. So let's go to our homepage right now where we're going to keep all of that UI. So here we are, and I can go ahead and search for member stack. As you can see here, we have member stack form. This works for all sorts of member stack forms, not just sign up and logins. Uh, we have button, which is going to open a modal, and we have the profile image uploader. So here in this case, what we would use is the form. So I can go ahead and paste this right now. And then I can select a whole bunch of different things. I can select if I want this to be login, sign up, profile, forgot password, or reset password. I can add new fields to it. I can enable social auth, for example, right here. I can go ahead and set Google. I can choose the icon. I can upload an SVG. Let's go ahead, for example, and select right here, Google. That is going to show up in our Google Auth button, which is going to show up right down here, as we can see. And you have total control over this. You can edit the styling of the form. You can edit the styling of the fields. You can edit the styling of the submit button right in bricks, just as you are used to. Now I have something really cool to show you. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this form right here uh, because we here at Member Stack have been working on making something for the bricks community, which is called bricks board. It is essentially a library, which you can contribute to as well of completely free bricks builder components. So here we are, as you can see, we're not even signed in or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and select this basic Member Stack sign up form and go ahead and see that it looks how I want it to look and click copy now. As you can see, it says it's been copied to clipboard. So let's go over back into bricks and let's paste it in. As you can see, this has pasted in, albeit with a little bit of things that are different due to the way that our project is set up versus, well, I'm the one who built this form, but you know, based on the form, I built that one in. So now I can go ahead and change anything that I want in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set, let's say this button right here to have a different background color. Let's go right over here, do submit button style, and let's go ahead and set the background to black. Which I believe it's applied on the tag. I think that's what's causing the issues. Indeed it is. So there we go. As you can see, it's now set to black. Let's just set it to blue because that's already the color of the border. So now, as you can see, we have this. We can do whatever we want to it, but for now, we're just gonna leave it exactly as is. And uh, let's go ahead and hit save on here, and then let's go and open this live and see what we're faced with. 
There we go. So as you can see here, we now have a working form to create an account. So let's just go ahead and make an account by entering some stuff in. Hit sign up. And as you can see right down there very quickly, it said you've created an account. Uh, we haven't set any redirects or anything like that up yet. So it's just going to keep us right here. But on the live site, we can see the member stack inspector and we can use this to tell that we're logged in, which member we're logged into, which member stack attributes appear on the page and all of that fun stuff, which is super important. This inspector tool is going to be your best friend while you are building with member stacks. So we've created an account. Now, how can we actually go ahead and see that member? Let's go back over to our member stack dashboard. And as we can see over here, that member has been created. They show up as new. It says when they've been created, that their email has not been verified. Anyways, long story short, that member is here exactly where we want them to be. Now, how do we allow that member to sign up? Well, we can go ahead and create a sign up form. Let's just go ahead and copy our, uh, sorry, sign up form over here and let's create a login form. First things first, let's go ahead and set a little bit of margin to the bottoms of these. Let's do 30 top and bottom, give them a little bit of space to breathe. And then this one right here, let's just switch this to login. Let's say enter your credentials Oops. to continue. Here, let's change this to say Let's say, actually, let's just delete these because in this case, you know, we have them both on the same page. So I'm just going to go ahead and click delete on that. I'm going to go ahead and click delete on that. And there we go. Now, the only thing I need to do to make this work is go into the settings over here and set it to be log in. Now, this is a totally working login form. Like I said, you can grab a component from Bricksboard. You can style it however you want to style it and essentially just continue working as you've been working. Our goal with MemberStack here is to be the membership plugin that allows you to work in the way that you love and that you're used to. And our goal is to give you the extra infrastructure to build custom membership experiences, charge subscription fees, and all of that fun stuff. We're not trying to change the way you work. We're trying to make it better and add more features to it. So with that being said, we now have our homepage over here looking nice and good. As you can see, we have our login form. We have our create an account form. Everything is working. And uh, we actually have a page that we've created, which is simply called gated. I've done nothing to it. I haven't even opened it in bricks yet. Um, but as we can see over here, we have that page existing. One of the most important things about member stack is gating content. So uh, let's go ahead and figure that out. First things first, let's open our inspector and let's actually log out um, from this member that we're logged into. So now we are just a visitor. We're not logged in or anything like that, as you can see, and this gated page is still working. How do we change that? Well, let's go into our member stack dashboard over here. Let's go to gated content. Let's create a new group. And in this case, let's just call it gated. Now, grant access to. In this case, we're going to set it to all members, which means we want every single logged in member to be able to see it. That being said, you can select members on specific plans and give only certain members access to the content. We're not going to do an in-depth overview of plans in this video, but I am going to get to them in just a little bit. So now we have to actually mark what it is that we want to gate. So here we have restricted URLs. There's two ways to gate content with member stack. One is URLs, so gating an entire page. And the other one is um, gating individual elements via adding data attributes. So you can simply add, in this case, data-ms-content equals gated. And uh, it will hide any element, whatever you've added the attribute to, to anyone who is not logged in in this case. You can even do the opposite by making it data MS content exclamation mark gated, and then it will show, let's say a button that says upgrade your account. Um, you can add that attribute to it with the exclamation mark, and it will show only to people who do not have this level of access. Anyways, I'm doing a whole lot of talking and a whole little showing, so let me get back into that right now. Here, we're going to set the URL to gated, and we can have this either as starting with or equal to. Let's say I had a whole bunch of pages that were like gated dash ebook, gated dash course, gated dash video. We can do starting with gated and it is going to apply to all of them. Or we can do equal to and it's only going to do exactly the page gated. Let's just leave it as starting with right now. 
Um, and here you would usually add some sort of upgrade or access denied page. I'm going to leave it as the home page because that's where we have our login form on. So let's go ahead and hit save on there. And then let's go back on into WordPress. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open again the member stack plugin, go to gated content and click refresh. As we can see here, we have our gated content group working. So now if I go back over here and I refresh, what we're going to see is it is completely securely going to take me to the home page. Something that we love about WordPress is that they allow us to actually, let's say, interfere with the server. And because of that, we have fully secure server side gating. So none of the content is going to be available to anyone until they've been verified with member stack. So now with that being said, let's go ahead and make a new account here. Let's just enter some stuff in. And then we're going to try in this case manually to go to slash gated. And as we can see, it is working. So the next two things I want to show you how to do that are super important are how to allow your members to update their own data and also how to show that data back to them anywhere that you want using Bricks dynamic data. So back over here in WordPress, let's go and go to our pages and we're going to open that gated page with Bricks. All right, so here we are in our totally empty gated page and let's go ahead and make this one work right now. So let's go ahead and add a section right in here. Let's just go ahead, ahead and add some basic padding to it to make things look a little bit better. Let's just do 50, 50, 100, 100. Should have probably just linked the sides, but whatever. There we go. We have that now. So let's go ahead, first things first, and add a heading. And what we're going to do in this heading is it's going to be a welcome back message. So let's go over here and let's type welcome back. Fine, but I mean, that's pretty boring, right? What if we want to actually greet that member? Let's do that right now by going to dynamic data, opening member stack, and then we can select their email, their ID, their verification status, join date, custom fields, anything that we want to uh, to select. So the thing that's really cool about this is that you don't only use this in Bricks for showing members, let's say their first name. You can use this for query loops. You can use this for anything to make really, really powerful stuff using your member data, which is all fully accessible directly to you in Bricks Builder. So let's go ahead and do first name over here. Let's hit save on that. And let's go back and take a look at what it looks like. It says, welcome back. Why does it say welcome back? Well, because this member does not have a first name, so it's not going to show anything. Let's go back into member stack over here. Let's go to our members and let's actually add a first name. Let's just make this guy Bob Saget like so and hit save. So as you can see, you, sorry, wrong person. Let's make this guy Bob Saget. Bob Saget. There we go. So as you can see, you can edit member data uh, through the admin dashboard. And I'm also going to show you in a sec how members can change it on their own. So right here now, as we can see, it says, welcome back, Bob. So now let's go back on into bricks. Let's add a little bit of padding there. Let's say 25 pixels and let's add another form member stack form like so. Here we have this form, and for the sake of this video, I'm not going to go crazy on styling it, but I am going to go ahead and set this to be profile. And then the fields, I can set this to be, let's say, email, and we're going to do text, select first name, because we want people to be able to edit that first name. Sorry, this should no longer be password. This should be first name, placeholder, enter your first name. There we go. So now this is a profile form. Again, we can style this in whatever way we want. Let's go ahead and, for example, make the sub submit button background black. And let's edit the border so that the radius is 50 and it's like a little pill. There we go. Let's just stick with that for now. It's good enough. Let's hit save and then let's open our live site again over here. As we can see, there is now a profile form and I'm going to change this instead of being Bob to be Bobbert. And I'm going to hit update profile. Your profile has been updated. Now, as you can see, if we refresh, it is no longer Bob. It is Bobbert. Now let's make it Robert. Probably should have chosen a more different name, but keep an eye on this B. I'm going to hit update profile. I'm going to refresh. And now it is Robert instead of 
Bobbert. So now you have seen with MemberStack how you can allow members to sign up and log in. You've seen how you can create these forms in whatever style fits for you. You've seen our free components on Bricksboard. You've seen how you can allow members to update their own data. You've seen how you can show that data back to them. And you've seen how you can use that member data to manipulate things like query loops and literally anything that you are building with WordPress. So we already in this very short video have the foundation of how to build any sort of gated custom membership experiences in WordPress. And I'm not going to be able to cover 100% of member stack in this video, but I do want to very quickly touch on a couple of things that are super important. For example, plans. Imagine you are building a language course. You're building something like Duolingo. Well, you are going to want people to select which uh, course, which language they're actually going to want to learn. So what you could do is you could create new plans for each one. Let's just say, let's make a free plan in this case. And let's call it Italian. Let's create that plan. Let's make another one and let's call it French. There we go. So now using these plans from gating URLs, from gating individual uh, elements on certain pages, we can show only the correct elements, and only give access to the correct people who need access to that gated content group. We can even, let's say European languages are another gated content group and we want to show people stuff that is relevant to Europe, but isn't necessarily just to French or Italian. We can make a gated content group and call it European. And we can assign both people who have French and people who have Italian to it. There is all sorts of crazy stuff that you can do once you get into these plans. And on the flip side, we have paid plans. And paid plans work in the same way, but, well, of course, they're paid. You can assign it so that people pay weekly, monthly, whatever it is that you want to do. There could be setup fees. There could be free trials, whatever it is that you want to do with free plans. And those are all directly linked to Stripe, which means they are completely secure. Nobody can bypass it unless they have actually paid you in Stripe before. So that is super important. And along with that, one other thing I want to mention is member data. So you've already seen how custom fields work. And just to add, you can create new custom fields. You can delete any custom fields, including these ones that we give you by default. And along with that, there are two more forms of member data that can come in handy. And again, I'm not going to do a full guide here, but I am going to tell you what they are. We have metadata, which can look completely different across members, and metadata can only be updated from the admin, so either the admin API or the admin themselves here in the dashboard. So I can, let's say, pet horse, and I can do whatever I want to this member. That is completely secure. They cannot update it. I can see it directly in there. And along with that JSON, you can store up to a megabyte of JSON, which is a ton. That is about a million characters of JSON per member. I've seen people use this, let's say, to build an AI chatbot and to store all of the members' conversations in there. That's the kind of thing that you can use member JSON for. And along with that, if you're wondering how to work with member JSON, you can use our AI chatbot called Ray. So I'm going to go right now to ray.memberstack.com and I can say, hey, Ray, how can I use member JSON, I'm using WordPress and Briggs Builder. Very vague question, but um, Ray here has full knowledge of the way that member stack works. So you can ask Ray whatever you want. Ray will give you an answer, tell you how to use it. There you go. We are getting the code right there on how we can use member JSON. So like I said, member stack is extremely, extremely flexible. And our goal is to not change the way you work. It's simply to enhance it with new features. So we are just now getting into the WordPress space and we are absolutely loving it, especially Bricks Builder. Now we are a community oriented product. That means our goal is to build simply what you want us to build. And we have a community Slack group, which is gonna be the first link in the description below. I encourage you to join that. You can ask questions to me, to community members, to other member stack team members. And we really want to create whatever tutorials you find useful. So whatever you're trying to do, please let us know in the community Slack. I'll talk to you soon and have a great day.